Assalamu alaikum. I'm going to be putting a question to Hamza. And the question is this. What is the secret power of Islam as compared to other religions? Uh, <laughs> you look worried. <laughs> and okay, so the secret power of Islam is the fact that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we affirm his oneness and we understand what oneness means with regards to his creative power, to his names and attributes and to his divinity and that liberates us from the shackles of this world because in Quran 39 29 for instance Allah speaks to us in a very powerful way and he's basically saying the default position for human beings is to worship just like what Martin Ling said, he said, man cannot not worship. Muhammad Iqbal, the great poet of the East, he said, this one prostration you find so difficult frees you from a thousand prostrations. So what is the verse saying? I'm paraphrasing, it says, consider the situation of two people. One man is a servant to many masters and they're all quarreling. And another servant, he's a master to one, one man whose condition is best. Obviously the one who's, a, who's at service to one master. So this is similar to our situation, like we're thrown into the world, our existential state is to want to know something the most at one point in our life, to love something the most, to obey something the most, and to direct acts of worship like gratitude towards something the most. So from that perspective, we're worshipping something because that's what worship is, worship is, to know something the most, to love it, to obey it, to direct acts of worship to something the most. So Allah is saying, if you don't worship Allah, you're worship something else, even if you reject God. Because everyone at some point wants to know something the most, wants to love something the most, obey something the most, and direct acts of worship like gratitude towards something the most. That's your object of worship. As Allah says in the Quran, have you not seen no one who takes his own desires as his Lord? And so on and so forth. So from this perspective, Islam liberates us. That's the powerful force of Islam. We liberate, liber, liber, liberates us. And the ruh, which means soul in Arabic and is found in the Quran, shares the same root as the word the raha, which means ease and liberty. The soul wants to achieve that ease and liberty, but it can only do so by worshipping the one that created them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that frees us from the shackles of the world. And it's so true, as Martin Ling said, man cannot not worship, but always in a state of worship. So the Quran came to solve this problem. Who is worthy of worship? And it's Allah who's worthy of worship. When you study the Quran, the prophetic traditions, his names and attributes, you know that he's worthy of worship. Irrespective of your philosophy, you're in a state of worship. Now ask yourself the question, who is worthy of worship? And the minute you understand who Allah is, you will fall in love with him, inshallah. So yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the powerful forces of Islam, as well as its ethics and its truth and so on and so forth. But I thought I'd add that in there. Thanks for pouncing on me again with regards so, to this question. If you guys are enjoying this, where I literally unscripted, unplanned, throw a question at him and he just has to off the cuff answer it, then comment below and I'm going to carry on this series because I think this is the best way of uh, getting. I mean, are, are you enjoying this? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> this drive safe. It, it's a bit difficult, but um, the other thing I wanted to ask you was actually. Why does Islam attract youth? If you look at the story of Ibrahim al Islam, he was a young man. The people of the cave, they're young people. The two people who stood up during uh, when Musa al Islam is speaking to Bani Israel, they stood up to actually speak. The, the two young men who actually took on Abu Jahl, the Pharaoh of this Ummah. So, why does Islam attract young people? I think because it gives you a powerful vision for life and it's hope, forgiveness, growth. So these are type of human motivations that we have, especially, especially as, as youth. You know, why are we playing computer games all the time? We have a psychological motivation to feel growth. That's what we want, the next level, the next level, the next level. And at the same time, if we fail, when you mess up in, on the first level, you, you could say restart. Allah gives you those restart buttons all the time through forgiveness. Allah says, Oh my believing servants, do not despair of the, of the mercy of Allah. He forgives all sins. So th th there's always U-turns in Islam. We're in London at the moment. Maybe uh, the, the mayor of London doesn't allow U-turns on some roads, but Allah allows U-turns, right? Allah Akbar. All the time. So <laughs> forgiveness, growth. You could always improve. You messed up yesterday, you drank on Thursday, you became drunk, but you want to go to Juma. Don't listen to Shaitan. Allah wants you to go to Juma. Allah wants you to worship Him, to come close to Him, irrespective of your past. 
The past does not equal the future in Islam. But youth, what happens to youth? They're not encouraged. And wallahi, you would, you would not understand how powerful it is when you just encourage a human being. And I've seen this in my professional life and any and other spheres of life. The people just need encouragement. And Allah, the most powerful, He encourages us. He wants us to come back to Him. He gives us a vision for our life. He says, you know, that, that us as believers, we must respond to the call of Allah, to that which gives us life. Yuhyikum. Allah is talking to people who already have life. But Allah is saying, you want life upon your life, real life? Respond to his call, which is responding to all that is good. So the growth element is there. The U-turn forgiveness element is there. It's like a computer game. Learn how to play the game of life. We're not belittling life, but it's a game. It's like an illusion from that point of view. Because the real life is the Akhirah. Play it properly, which is keep on growing, keep on going forward. And if you fail, Allah allows the restart buttons. Allah allows you to keep on, keep on returning to him, inshallah. Uh, so there's the forgiveness, there's the growth. Uh, what was the other one? Forgiveness, growth. Anyway, the other one is, is just giving you a sense of life and purpose, you know? Um, because the things that you can achieve under Islam, when you look at your history, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, we had youth at the age of 14, I believe. They were liberating current countries and showing the peace and harmony of Islam. Of Islam. Today, youth, they're liberating countries on Xbox. Uh, and we just have to change that motivation, you know? Uh, obviously, I don't mean liberate from a, you know, you know, violence, evil point of view. I'm talking about showing the truth of Islam, going to countries, sharing Islam in a powerful way because our youth did that. Because Islam was based on the backs of youth from that perspective. Gives you, give you a sense of proper vision for your life, you know? Mm. Uh, so anyway, this is all random stuff, but the point of view is that, you know, Islam fulfills the motivation. I think the game analogy is quite powerful. I, I do like it. And you, yeah. you said um, 14, I think you were referring to Muhammad bin Qasim. I think he was around 18. And Pakistan, you know, that whole region, Islam came to the region because of people like him. So, Jazakallah khair for watching and give me more questions below which I can just fire away at him randomly and hopefully he'll give us some answers.